In this video I will show you physics and mathematics to implement virtual stick for missions. Not all DJI aircrafts have inbuilt mission handling. I modified the iOS sample from DJI with SDK 4.14. I added a virtual stick simulator to see the different settings. In the top of the screen I added the aircraft attitude bearing, distance, altitude and pitch angle. So we can see during the mission what happens. I will simulate a star mission. We can change the star points. Actually I set them to 5 and zero curve radius max speed at 4 meter per seconds. The advantage to do this in the simulator is that you can overlap the aircraft traffic between different settings and it's very precise. You cannot do that outdoor but with the simulator you can have the line from the aircraft and so you can make different missions and see the overlap with the settings. So the first mission is very easy. We fly straight forward to the next waypoint then we decelerate and stop the aircraft and then we yaw the aircraft into the new direction. You can see that on this map here. So during the flight we always check bearing and distance to the next target. We do that with a timer 25 times per second. This is the easiest way to add virtual stick waypoint missions. When we arrive at the waypoint we yaw the aircraft in the new bearing direction and fly to the next waypoint. Before we arrive at the next waypoint we decelerate the speed. If we have 4 meter per second we decelerate at 4 meter per second half the distance. The maximum speed between two waypoints is distance divided by 4. If the speed is too high, you will overfly the waypoint. With this method, we need no latency compensation. If we fly direct to the next waypoint, we decelerate, yaw the aircraft in the new direction and fly to the next waypoint. You will see later that we have a higher latency if we add curves for the waypoints. So if this method two values are very important, you can see it on the top on the screen, it's the distance and the bearing to the next waypoint. You can see how the distance decelerate to zero if we reach the waypoint. Now we are decelerating and we are at the waypoint 0 0.5. Now we go into curved mode. So actually I always fly the first mission with edges, then we can see very precise where the aircraft traffic was. And so now I can check the precision for the next flight. You can see the star on the simulator screen. And now we have added 5 meter curve radius and zero latency compensation. Now you can see what happens. You can see in the simulator screen that we overdrive the curve. This is normal with zero compensation for the latency. You can see in the next curve we overdrive two. And so it will continue the whole mission that we always overdrive the curve. Even if we decelerate speed for the curve, we have an overdrive. I will explain later in this video how we can compensate latency. First some mathematics. We have to find the point S with the distance S to the waypoint where we start the curve mode. You can see here the mathematics. We have also to calculate alpha, the angle alpha, and alpha is the difference between bearing 1 and bearing 2. I always start with an Excel sheet to do my homework in mathematics before I start programming in Xcode. If your mission is in an array, we will see that later, 
it's very easy to find the two bearings and then to calculate alpha between these two bearings and the point S it's also easy to calculate and with all these parameters you can have the curve's length you can calculate the time for the curve and also the angular speed to your the aircraft you can see all the values on the top on the screen now we are at speed 4 meter per second we decelerate go into the curve and we change the bearing to do all these simulations i simply added a new view controller into the dji ios sample and i did some corrections for xcode 12 and swift 5. now we can see how we overdrive completely this curve so for me the precision is always this entry curve at the end to simulate how precise we can handle virtual stick missions but where this latency comes from so we have the remote control we send the command then we get the gps position for the aircraft back we calculate the correction I repeat, we send a command, a virtual stick command to the aircraft. Then we get a feedback from the aircraft. Then we have to calculate the correction. And we send the correction to the aircraft. And all this needs time. And that's the main reason where the latency comes from. But what we can do to avoid this? So I have two methods. First, I decelerate before go into the entry point S to start the curve. I decelerate to the calculated curve speed and then I decrease aircraft speed. I increase angular velocity. And with these two methods, we can compensate latency. Let's see what happens when we do so. So I go up to 20% to compensate these two parameters. I do not delete the blue traffic lines. They are very helpful to analyze our precision. So we go into the curve and we can see that we are faster and better on the way to the next vein point. But with 20% I compensated too much. You have really to play with these values to find the optimized values and I will later in another video show the difference between the inbuilt mission codes and between other apps how precise they really are in the curved mission mode. Let's concentrate on the speed. We go down to 3 meters per second into the curve. Then we accelerate to 4 meters per second on the normal straight line. I decrease speed before the curve, go into the curve and yaw the aircraft. You can see that I use the Mavic Mini 1 to do this simulation. It's important to do it with an aircraft who has no inbuilt mission handling. So I will speed up this section and we will see at the end how we go into the final entry curve and in the straight line we can see how precise we really are. Now it's the important moment. We go back to the home point. <clears throat> I did this to start all the missions always from the same start point. As we can see, I overcompensated with 20% the latency. Now I go back to 15 and let's see what happens with 15. And I will also change the curve radius to 3 meters. So we start the mission. Mm -hmm. 
it's quite comfortable to have these settings into the app. Now see what happens with three meters. It's not so bad, so we are really precise. I will show a benchmark with other apps and with the inbuilt mission code later in another video. Here we can see if we compensate these two latencies parameter, we can get a really precise flight for our mission on virtual sticks, even with a small aircraft like the Mavic Mini 1. Now let's concentrate on the final curve. There we can really see the result of our programming. Now it comes. So I'm quite happy with my homework. Another advantage to use virtual stick that we are completely free to use actions where we need it. I will show that later in this video. Now let's go in some code. Let's see the curve problems. Check if you have more than 50 degree per second angular velocity. Check if your entry point into curve is lower than one third from the waypoint distance. Decrease curve radius. It's not possible to do this curve. Check if the maximum speed between two waypoints is not higher than the distance divided by four. Before we go into a virtual stick, we have to prepare the virtual stick. So the DG flight orientation mode has to be aircraft heated. And we have to enable set multiple flight mode. Then we can start the normal virtual stick mode. And we have to start also the advanced virtual stick mode. It's important to use both for windy conditions. Only in advanced virtual stick mode you have compensation for wind. With this method you can also check if the virtual stick is enabled or not. That's important to disable. You can check if it is already enabled. And now the most important point. If you enable virtual stick mode, you have no longer control on your remote. So if you move your sticks, the aircraft will not respond. And if you have a bug, you have no control over the aircraft. So the easiest way to gain the, the aircraft back is to add with a delegate method for the remote controller a control if somebody moves the sticks during a mission. You can immediately stop your virtual stick mission if you do so. This is the most elegant way to do it. The pilot gets panicked if you have no control over the aircraft and it's not a good idea to add stop buttons on the display. It's more efficient if you add this method, if somebody moves the sticks, that immediately he has control over the aircraft. The easiest way to store the missions is in a simple array. So you can save it into a file, load it from a file and you can add any actions you like. Then to go into the mission, it's a simple for loop where we go into the coordinates and you can read for each coordinate the actions you need. Another important point is that all the movings from your aircraft is handled by the Grand Central Dispatch method. I add for all my virtual stick methods like yawing or moving forward a dispatch group so I can enter it and I can go on wait and then I can check if the aircraft has reached the waypoint or not. We can also add timeouts for each step as you can see on the screen. Now another important point. If you go into the simulator with a Mavic Mini it becomes hot so I put it on a fan so it can simulate during hours and hours and you get no problems with the aircraft. The star mission is easy to program and it's very complicated for curves. So it's a good mission to test 
the virtual stick methods. I already published the code on the DGI forum for developers. I added the star mission first for light painting, but now I use it for the missions. Now we will enable interval photos and there you can see all the strengths for the virtual stick method. You can add anything you like during your virtual stick flight. That's not possible on an inbuilt DJI mission. And I already showed in another video how we can do AB shootings during a mission. This is very important for photogrammetry shootings. And I will add this method also in my app so that we can have AEB shootings for photogrammetry missions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next time, thanks for watching.